Welcome to our channel and thanks for tuning in. Now I know that God has a word not just for you, but he also has a word through us for you. Now we're about to start. Make yourself comfortable and let's venture into God's word together. Well, amen, amen, and amen. I trust everybody can hear me well. Uh, thank God for the different things that God has been doing. Uh, 2021 is well on the way. Um, by his grace, he has kept us. He has watched over us. I, I rejoice, obviously, with the with the good news, uh, the the recoveries, the uh, the strength, and the open doors, the testimonies that God has been given uh, to us. You know, constantly. Um, I rejoice with the with the ladies. Obviously, it's good news that they, you know, finally are doing something. Uh, praise the Lord uh, for that. I think we should rejoice with them. Uh, I think it's also a good thing that they're starting with intimacy with God. Obviously, they mentioned that the men, you know, uh, but when you already have intimacy with God, you don't have to start learning about it again. But it's okay. We will we'll welcome you. When, when you ladies have gotten it, you can come and join us in the parlor with, with the master. We have been enjoying intimacy for a long time. You know, such intimacy that we can even play football and the father is there with us because we're two or three are gathered in his name. Come on, somebody. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. No, we rejoice with the entire ministry. Um, it's, a, it's going to be, for, for the ladies in the house, guys, it's going to be an exciting time. It's going to be a really, really pivotal time. Uh, Pastor KK is obviously a friend to the ministry. She's been with us for a number of times and it's been such a blessing. So I expect it to be an increasing, uh, a time of increased uh, intimacy uh, with God. I believe all, all the men need that even more so. Because as men, there's a greater responsibility that is placed on our shoulders, and we need to be latched on, tied in to, to the master um, even more so. <clears throat> so God bless you all. I want us to, to carry on. Uh, but before I do, I, I did mention uh, to Toby, and she, she did actually mention this in the um, good news segment. If you have any good news, if you have things that have happened, testimonies, you know, uh, because guys, remember, there's such... Uh, bleak news in the mainstream media. And we are the custodians of good news. Good news has been given to us. Bible says that, you know, blessed are the feet of they, you know, that bring good news. And we are the blessed of the Lord. Therefore, the things that God is doing in and through you, why don't you just send us a note? Send it into, you know, uh, I think it's media at Flowing Rivers UK. Uh, org media at floorriversuk.org. Let somebody know. You can you can DM um, DM us on our on our social media uh, platform, our social handles. Or you, if you're in the house, why don't you send it to? You can send it direct to to OJ to to Joel, or you can even send it direct to, to Toby. You know, so that she can compile it. We want to keep not just national and international news, but we also want to give you know local and and family news, as it were. Because the good news is spread all around, all around. So in, in light of good news and good announcements, and I hope the ladies have forgiven me, because uh, obviously, you know, it's all banter. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, it's kind of cold out there. I've got too many ladies behind the scene that are shaking their head. All I'm saying is Jesus says to let it go. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. For those of you who are at home, I'm just, I'm, 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 what's the word? I'm opening you up to some of the, <clears throat> the love and the banter within the, the remote studio uh, that we are, we are operating over here. But let's come together in just appreciation for what God has done already. Father, we just say thank you. Here we are, middle of the month of January, uh, when, when this whole pandemic kicked in. In uh, last year, uh, we didn't know where we would or where it would go or what would happen or how it would happen, but we knew whom it is that we could put our trust in. We knew to whom we can run to, our help in time of trouble, and you have been that. You have comforted those, Father Lord, that have lost loved ones. You have strengthened those, Father Lord, that did not know that they could hang on. Lord, you have protected so many. You have preserved so many. You have restored so many, and we are so grateful. We thank you. We love you. We ask, oh God, that as we share today, Lord, that you will pour out your spirit upon this word. I pray, Father, Lord, that you will use this 
playlist to, 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 to do justice to your word. I don't know them like you do. I don't know their conditions like you do. I don't know their motivations like you do. I don't know their situations like you do. But I know that you do. And I know that if you can speak, no, not even I know. Uh, because you can speak through a donkey, because you can use rocks, Lord, to, to praise your name, how much more? How much more? Lord, as I submit myself to the use of your Holy Spirit, to bless your people and to bless my life too. Take glory, my Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen and amen. So if you have your Bibles, we, we've been doing this uh, where we want to be very intentional about opening the scriptures together and to read together. Um, it's, it's part of my rehabilitation uh, uh, because I recognize that um, in my many years of ministry, it's easy to just be quoting scripture and people not following in and following on. So we want to encourage you to do that. Our takeoff scripture is going to be the same that we've been doing all along. So if you want to open up to Psalm 90, verse number 12, by the time we finish this series, you will know this scripture like the back of your hand. And for those of you who don't know the back of your hand, please remember COVID is real. You need to wash your hands. And the more you wash your hands, you'll know the back of your hands. Okay? So we need to ensure, I see people looking at the back of their hand at the moment in, in our remote studios, thinking, how well do I know the back of my hand? You know, but Psalm 90 verse 12 will be imprinted, etched. It will be, it'll be engraved onto the tablet of your heart so that it, it rings. I, I, I desire that it rings in your heart over and over again. I know that God desires that we meditate in it day and night that it, 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 it forms the, the structure that kind of guides how our operation because the Bible tells us how the word of the Lord is like a lamp unto our feet in the book of Psalm, 9, Psalm 19. It is a lamp unto our feet. It guides us. It helps us to see where we are going and how to go, where to go. You know, Jesus, just before, just before going to the cross in John chapter 17, uh, probably the, the entire uh, chapter of John 17 was Jesus talking to the Father and, and relaying back to God that, look, everything you sent me to do, I've done it. I've, I've done all that you called me to do. The people that you called me to, to raise, I've raised them. The word that you called me to speak, I've spoken it. The, the places you wanted me to go, I've been there. And that becomes my, my, my rallying call, my heart's cry. I, I want to be able to to, to return. I, I want to live a life that allows me to return to the Father when, when, when the, in the fullness of time to be able to say, that which you asked me to do, I have done. The, the people that you've given me, the, uh, what I meant to do with and through them, Lord, and to them, I have been able to do just that. How I'm meant to invest in them, I've been able to, to, do, to do that. But you can't do that if you're not aware of purpose. You can't do that if you're not living in purpose on purpose, because it has to be a deliberate act. It has to be intentional. It, it doesn't just happen. It is intentional. So we'll go to our, our launch scripture, Psalm 90, verse 12, and it reads, and I quote, So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Now, I'll just do a little, a brief recap, just so that we're all on the same page. You know, we established that to number, uh, in this case, is not talking about counting the days, but making the days count. To make each day count, to make each year count, each month count, each week has to count. We established that. We established that learning how to make our days count will therefore produce it will produce in me and produce in you a heart of wisdom. And, and, and the, the phraseology of, of wisdom that we are operating by is that <clears throat> wisdom, according to philosopher William James, is the art of being, uh, the art of knowing what things to overlook, to know what things not to sweat, to know what battles not to get involved in that's what that's one of the one of the fruits of wisdom is you you edit your life 
Wisdom allows you to edit your life, allows you to save your energy for the battles that really matter. It allows you to know which things to get involved in and which things to just push to one side. As you step into 2021, as you step forward in 2021, you ought to be confident of the things that you are doing that they actually matter, that, that the areas that you're pouring your strength in actually matter. Could you imagine if you were studying for a particular exam, you're studying for a particular subject, and, and tomorrow we've got mathematics, but, but you are putting all your energy in biology and there's no biology exam. Or the biology exam doesn't really matter. It doesn't really, you know, when, when we were in, in, uh, in education, when I used to teach different um, schools all around, all around the UK, <clears throat> how to take exams. You know, I used to show them the different plans that you have to have and things like that and teach them how to think. I wasn't teaching a subject, but I was teaching just the, the, the mindset of winning in education. All those different things are, are things that, how you know where, where to put more, more of your energy and things like that. That is the operation of wisdom. And if we know how to make each day, each moment count, it bursts in us the ability to know what things to sweat and what things not to sweat. Let's move on. You know, we, we talked about how to make things count. One of the ways uh, is you assign a significance to it because if it doesn't count towards something, it will count for nothing. I'll say that one more time. If it doesn't count towards something, then it's going to count for nothing. Naming your days, putting a, a significance on your days is a step in that direction. You know, it helps you to focus. Um, and without focus, you cannot have breakthrough. You know, when you name it, it helps you to focus. You know what you're about. And, and you, I, you, you evaluate the name that you have given to that day and say, by the end of this day, if I accomplish this, would I consider this day a, a, a success? Would God give me a pass mark regarding this day if I accomplish this, you know, we, we mentioned about how people who go to the gym, they name the days. They name the days that they're, that they're going through so that they, they don't just do things arbitrarily. When I started out in the gym, I mentioned to you, I was, I was a, every day, every day was every day. Everything, I was doing everything every day and I was not going far with it. It was not going very far. But as I began to understand and grow and, and really get take things more seriously, I understood the need to, to begin to name things and be more intentional so that I could evaluate accurately. And, and you see it come up on your screen in a few seconds now. What I did not know was my daughter, uh, Trinity, she, she caught on. And since, since I've been doing some home workouts and things like that, she actually came up with her own workout plan. I think you, you probably see that on the, on the screen, you know, and she, she designed it and put it up and she goes, dad, can we do this together? Would you, would you come along with me? So if you look on there, you know, she's got Monday for the first week is legs. I'm thinking legs, why are you doing your legs? What's going on there? You know, cardio and abs, you know, arms. And then Thursday it's rest. And then Friday we're doing hit, you know, for the first week. I'm like, what? Saturday's on Sunday rest. You better rest on Sunday, you know. And you know the, the whole. But what what I loved about it was that as we we're talking about it, she's acting on it. She was acting on it and putting something in place. And you know, I have to ask you. We talked about plan for the last two weeks. Do you have a plan, or is your plan still a dream? Is this still an imagination that is in your mind? And I, I told you that the things about dream is this reality will wake you up. And once reality wakes you up, dreams disappear. Dreams disappear. Plans will remain. So have a plan. You know, we, what, what is a plan? A plan is a detailed proposal for doing or achieving something. It's a detailed proposal for doing or achieving something. Or an intention or a decision about what it is that you are about to do. So don't, don't let your plan just be in the air. Write it down. Make yourself accountable to it in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't plan in the moment. You plan ahead. 
Never rely on planning in the moment. Plan ahead. Spend time designing your day, design your life, design your month, design your week in God. You know, design it in God. Don't resign it to chance. Design your day, your week, your month. Design it in God. Don't resign it to chance. Don't just wait for it to happen and whatever happens, happens. No, sit with God. Part of your quiet time, part of your conversation with the master should be, what is this? What do you expect of me this week? If it were a boss that you really wanted to, to, to impress, you would sit with that individual. What is your expectation of me this week, this month, this year? And as, as the, that boss, that manager, that director, the shareholders, as they speak about that, now you can then know what to tailor. How can you plan for something that you do not know if it's going to be successful or not? Now, here's what I mean by that. How do you know if what you are planning for is actually what you will be rewarded for? God forbid that you lay out a plan and the plan is done outside of God. And by the time you finish it, you bring it to God and say, I didn't ask for that. You've labored in vain, bringing forth trouble. So when I say design it in, in God, don't resign it to chance. None of your plans, none of your thinking should be outside of God. So all the different categories that we spoke about last week, the, the intent is that you bring it before God. Remember we said, many are the plans of a man's heart, but only the will of the Lord shall be established. Only God's will needs to be established. So we looked at some key areas that you would need to plan. Remember, plan is something that you, you're intentional about. You write down. We talked about, you know, planning for the family. Have a plan for your family. Have a, a plan for your finances. Have a plan for your finances. Have a plan for your spiritual development. How are you to develop spiritually in this 2021? Have a plan. It doesn't have to be for the whole year. Start with just for the first quarter. This is what I, I want to do to develop spiritually in the first quarter. What about your career? How, how are you going to move up in your career or expand your career or maybe even change careers? You need a plan. Don't just go haphazardly. You know, a haphazard life is a confused life and it, it builds stress because then you don't know whether you are actually going in the direction that you should be going at all. But when you have a plan, it clarifies your vision. It makes you to see clearly. You see clearer. You know, have a plan for your business. You know, I, I mentioned to you last week that the Jewish principle that every, every Jew, according to that principle, ought to also have a trade regardless of the qualifications that you have. Why? Because they've experienced so much dispersion, they recognize that they might be, you know, taken to another city, another town, another village, another country where their, their certification does not, you know, they, they would not carry, uh, does not count for anything. And therefore, they, they, they need a trade that is irrespective of where you are. Almost irrespective of where you are, you will need plumbers, you will need bricklayers, you will need, uh, you will need um, what do they call it, electricians, you know, things of that nature, carpenters. And so you see doctors, who, you see people who are qualified in, you know, as a doctor, as a psychologist, as a psychiatrist, but they also have a trade. I told, I told you last week about Paul, who even though he was a trained lawyer, he also learned how to make tents. And when his law degree couldn't work for him anymore because people were just coming to kill him, guess what? He made his money making tents. Have a plan for your education. You know, when, when I used to go into schools, I used to train the students how to answer questions. If you, you know, when you, when you get into an exam room, you don't just start, bah, bah, bah. you know, people say, where do you start from? Start from the front. Start from the front and work your way to the end. Other people will tell you, no, you start from the back. Because the back, obviously, the end questions are the, the big mark questions. Start from the back, work your way to the front. You know, I normally tell people, I say, don't. The first thing you do for the first two, three minutes, just breathe and then go through all the questions. Just look at all the questions and identify the ones that you know you can do. 
identify the ones that you know this is foolproof, I will get this mark. You start with those ones. You start with the ones you know this mark is in the bag. You don't start from the back and you're sweating over a 25 mark question that you're struggling with, and but you've eaten all the time up. And the easy ones that you could have just gained three marks for, you never got to it just because you started at the back. At the same time, you don't start in front where you're just rushing through the ones that are easy, but then it eats up all the time and then you don't do the ones at the back, which you actually did know, but you never check. This is why you plan. I tell when you get to an exam room, you sit and you plan first. Don't start answering first. Sit, plan first. It, it will take you a minute, two minutes. But that plan will organize that one hour, one and a half hours, two hours of sitting in that exam room. A plan is necessary. A plan is key. Your relationships, plan. Have a plan for the relationships that are in your life. The people that are in your life. The Bible says the wise man chooses. Chooses. That means it didn't just happen. There are some people that just, they, almost by osmosis, they just happened into your life. Those kind of people, you still have a choice. They, don't, they can come in, they don't have to stay in. They might come in, they don't have to stay in. Why? It should still be your choice because it is an operation of wisdom to choose his friends. And guys, just because we're living in a, a, a unique generation, when I'm using the, the you know, it, I don't, I'm not even sure they, they're called pronouns nowadays because, you know, it was a while that I actually paid to learn English. We have some English people that are, you know, they were born English. I like, uh, like that Roman centurion, he said, oh, I paid for my own citizenship, you know. So I don't know if it's the pronoun, but the if I use his scripturally, I'm talking both male and female. I don't want the, the ladies to cut our stream again. I mean, not allegedly, allegedly. Allegedly. We need to keep repeating the allegedly. Amen. But have a plan. Listen, as, as funny as it sounds, look, we had a plan. Even when the stream went down, there was a plan in place. What do we do if this kind of things happen? We don't plan in the moment you plan ahead. What happens if this were to happen? What happens if that were to happen? You sit, if you don't sit to plan, things would take you by surprise and life would be like a bully, just bullying you left, right, and center. Have a plan for your relationships. Have a plan for your health. Sit and think it through. Do you know that not every diet plan works for every body type? Not every diet plan works for every, uh, the, the type of activity that you do in your day. If you're the kind of person that your job requires you to walk around, your diet plan might be different. Your exercise routine might be different. If you're the kind of person that is sedentary, you sit down all day for your, for your job, you know that your diet plan might be different. It, it's not one size fits all. You need to sit, you need to plan. I've been learning so much about, you know, metabolic rates and metabolic this and it, just so many different ones that you, you need to spend time and just think what, what is best. What is, what is the most appropriate thing to my condition, to my situation? Have a plan for your health. Have a plan of how you're going to contribute to life. We talked about that last week. How, 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 what contribution are you going to make to life? Or are you just going to come and go? And all that will be between your, the date of birth and the date of death is a dash. God forbid. God forbid. Your dash should be filled with contribution, donation to humanity, donation in, in wisdom, donation in, in words, in, in thoughts, donation in... The, what have you contributed? But if you don't have a plan for it, guess what? It's not happening. It's not happening. And finally, we talked about having a plan for eternity. What will happen when all is done? When all is said and done, what will be your what will be your end? What would what would, what would the end be like? For those who might be watching and thinking, I don't believe in an afterlife. What if you're wrong? Do you have a plan for that? What if? Just what if? If 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 you are right that there's no afterlife, if you're right 
Okay. But if you're wrong, do you have an insurance policy? If these quirky people who are saying that there is a heaven after all of this, and if you do not make heaven, there is a real hell as well. If these quirky people are right, do you have an insurance policy to safeguard you in the event of such a thing being true? What's your plan? If you did not have one before, Jesus already made a ready-made plan for you. All he needs for you is to agree with him, to sign on his dotted line, to come into a relationship. He's done it all. He's paid that price already. I, I was doing a, a, a training with, with some of my leadership, um, and, and one was obviously a role playing, and one of the leaders was like, nah, 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 it's cool. It's cool. I, I, I'll pay for my own sins. And, and I, didn't, I wasn't there for the, the entire conversation, so I might get it. I might not be very accurate, but words to the effect, the other leader was like, yeah, you want to pay for your own sins. Hell is real. <laughs> Hell is real. Do you, are you sure you want to go there? You know, but that was role play. That was role play. But the, the reality is, we didn't have a plan for your eternity. It shouldn't be left to chance. Should not be left. Do not leave your eternity to chance. Guess why? You're going to spend a long time there. You're going to spend a long time there. You better be sure of your destination. What's your plan for eternity? Today, however, we're moving on to the next P. So we've talked about the P plan, which is knowing what to do. You, you list out the things to do as you design it in God. You list out the different things that God wants you to do. And usually it's not just one thing. It's a few things. Because as I've listed some of the things there, you know, plan for life, a plan for contribution to life, plan for health, plan for relationship. There's a, there's a whole uh, plethora of things that are now on your table. And because you planned it, all of them are relevant. Because you've planned it, they're all relevant. But there's a, another phase to this. And that is this next P, which is P for purpose. If you're making notes, I want you to write it as bold as you can. P for purpose. We, we want to look at not just the what, but now the why. Why are you going to give yourself to, to those strict guidelines? Why would you edit, limit yourself to a few things, not everything? Why is it, why would you choose this battle, not that battle? Why would you carry on? Why would you push through? Why, why, why are you gonna do the things that you have you're placed on that table? Your why has to be so clear to you, so, so visible that nothing can shake you from it. Knowing your why, knowing why you are committing yourself to accomplishing those things. We've been going through this, um, you know, name your day. And, you know, we've had different people who have jumped on. Um, one of my, my leaders, Laura, is almost on a daily basis, you know, uh, she's naming her day. She's sending it on Instagram and sometimes within the, the group chat, you know, the leadership day. Today is self-care day. Today is a uh, career and business day, you know, and she, she pushed. My question would be to her is that, do you, do you remind yourself of the why? Why? Why are you going to commit the whole day or half a day or three hours of your life to that particular thing that you have planned? If you don't remember the why, you'll give up along the way. I said to somebody, I said, if, you're, if you don't know the why, you won't even try. It will, it will suck out life from you, from your ability to try. Because here's the deal. If your plan is worth anything, if it comes from God, your plan will generally be something that's bigger than you. If it comes from God, it will generally be bigger than you. And there will be moments where you want to quit. Your why is one of the reasons why you're going to push through. Your why is one of the reasons that you will push through. Let's go to uh, just a couple of scriptures. 
If you have your Bibles, open to Hebrews chapter, chapter 12, verse number 2. In fact, first of all, before you open to Hebrews, open to John chapter 12, verse number 27. I'll give you the, the backstory of John 12. John 12 is Jesus is getting ready. He's getting ready at the final moment of Jesus with his disciples. So he's talking to them. He's getting them to understand, look, guys, I'm going to have to die. I'm going to have to go. And I know some people kind of talk about it because he's Jesus. He's the king, uh, king of kings, lord of lords, you know, unchangeable changer, immovable mover. We give him all these accolades because he's all of that. He's God, you know, he's wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father. He's all of those things. There's no doubt about it. He is all of those things. But one of the things he also is, just as equally, he chose to also be the son of man. And as the son of man, he goes through some of the trepidation that we go through. The difference is how he handles it. The difference is that because of perspective, because he can see the full picture, he handles it in a different way than we have done in time past. In John chapter 12, he's telling them all these things that was happened to him. And then verse number 27, read it with me. Verse number 27 says, now, this is Jesus speaking. It says, now my soul is troubled. So the, the humanity in Christ, the, the guys, you don't understand. This is, is heavy on me. My soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? Let me say in, in normal English, he's saying, look, guys, this is hard. My, my soul is in perplexion right now. My mind is all over the place. I, this is tough. So he says, he asks a rhetorical question. Should I be asking God to, to save me from this hour? Should I ask the Father to save me, to, to, to rescue me from having to go through this mess? You know, the things that they were going to do to him? Because he he's a student of the word. He knew that they were going to have to rip up his beard. He knew they were going to jam thorns into his forehead, into his head. He knew they were going to beat the skin off his back, beat the bone, beat the skin off till, till, till the bone is exposed. He knew they were going to go, he was going to go through all of this until he was, until he's crucified on the cross. And, and the imagery and the, the faith. Have you ever been to that situation where your mom or your dad tells you, wait till we get home? They have not touched you. But the thought of what will happen, the thought of your predicament, the thought of your, of your destiny, your, your immediate destiny, the pain that that brings is almost as real as the physical pain itself. In fact, we used to say that I would prefer to be beaten now. Just beat me now. Deal with me now. Can I just say, for those who are watching this from the Western Hemisphere, um, beaten in an African context is not, is not synonymous with abuse. It's just synonymous with discipline. That's what we mean when we, you know, when my, when my parents told me, I'm going to beat you, they said what they translated, if you read the subtitles, it says, I'm going to discipline you because it is the son whom the father loves that he disciplines. And it is the one whom the father does not love that he leaves to his own devices. So if your parents just constantly leave you to your own devices, read the word. Amen. So Jesus says, what shall I say about this? Father, save me from this hour. And read the next thing he says. He says, no, but for this purpose, I came to this hour. He said, this is the reason why I came. My why is real to me. My why is clear to me. So in as much as I want to be saved from this hour, I know I cannot be saved from this hour. I refuse to be saved from this hour. Anybody who's been in the gym and you have a goal and you're pushing and you're pushing and it feels like everything is just going to burst. And you think, I, I need to quit right now. But if you have your why clear, why are you there? What, what is it that you're trying to achieve, accomplish? And they're like, what, do you want to stop now? Do you want to stop now? And you go, no, 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 it's cool. It's cool, it's cool, it's cool. I got it, I got this, I got this, I got this. And you push through only because your why is clear to you. If your why is weak, if your why is weak, 
Guys, you stop. You'll get off that treadmill. You jump off that 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 uh, bench press or whatever it is. And for those uh, who are at home, um, who are um, wondering, I wasn't picking my ears. I've got my earpiece in there, so in case the director wants to in involve me in anything, so I don't want anybody thinking, "Well, I can't believe he's picking his ear. Is his ears on air? Don't he have no decorum?" I don't know why you have to get America for that, but it is well. Um, praise the Lord. But your why has got to be Chris. If you move on to Hebrews chapter twelve, verse number two. Jesus, we, we see Paul writing about this very act of Jesus as well. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy, that's the why, the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and now he has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He, his why was clear to him. So he, he could endure the pain. Some of you went through medical school, uh, architecture school, uh, all the different degrees that people have done. Those who did German, all the different degrees that people put themselves through, they did so because you had a clear vision of the, there's a, there was a why. There's a why behind it. If your why is not clear, you end up doing somebody else's business, but you're still working. You're still laboring, but you're not really producing. There's no success at the end of that. There's a, there's a gentleman by the name, in fact, before I, before I talk about Jacob, before I talk about Jacob, um, what, what does the word purpose mean? Purpose, one of the, the dictionary meanings that, that comes up is the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Now, I'm not talking about the purpose of your life here. That's not the conversation for today. Today's word is about the purpose for the things that you are planned for. The, the, the plans, the individual plans that you have, the purpose for that is what I'm talking about. How you, you need to match each plan that you have has to be matched to a why. Each plan that you have has to be matched to a why. Say a person's sense of resolve or determination. Your why is incredibly important. Incredibly important. Your purpose for doing something. Because if it doesn't mean anything to you, you won't undertake what it needs to be diligent in sacrifice. So always remind yourself of why you have committed yourself to the plans that you have in place. Keep reminding yourself of why you have committed yourself to those plans. Because the reality is that just because you, you know the why at the beginning, sometimes you lose it towards the middle when the pressure is on, when the pain kicks in for some people. Or for some people, when the success hits, you forget. You forget why in the first place that you were going for it. And we get lost in the midst of success. There was a man by the name of Jacob. For, for, for those who know about it, I'm going to read a, number, a couple of scriptures. They're all from Genesis chapter 29. So if you want to open to Genesis 29, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures that just helps you to understand. I mean, this guy went through something that I don't know many people that can, but I know one or two people that have. I've gone through something similar. John, Genesis chapter 29, starting from verse number 10. The Bible says from verse 10, Genesis 29, and it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, or Laban, depending on which country you come from, you know, uh, of, of, of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Then Jacob kissed Rachel. Guys, that was a holy kiss. That was, they, they went snugging. He didn't know her at this stage. He had just met her for the first time. For anybody going to say, can you see? The Bible said, the Bible said. No, understand it in context. 
that uh, if you've ever lived in the Mediterranean, I mean, the first time I, I went, I lived in, in, in Italy for, for uh, a season uh, of my life. And man, it was incredible because as a young Nigerian boy, you're there and people are just coming up to you. And, mwah, mwah. I say, hey, wow, I must be very fine. I must be a handsome bobo. Because random, pe- random ladies from everywhere, anybody, they, as, as, as you're meeting them, they're just going, mwah, mwah. I say, wow, come on, keep it going. Until in my own expression of sexuality, when the men started doing the same, I said, okay, maybe this is a bit, we have to tone this down. We have to, we have to turn the dial down. It's, it's, it's not congruent with my expression of sexuality. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Turn it down. But until I understood that that's just how it's a greeting. It's a Mediterranean style of greeting. So, and that's when I began to understand how difficult it is. It must be for some of the ladies when, you know, you have, you've not really shaved and you've got stubble and it's sharp and the bristles are, I, I, you know, you just think, all right, it's cool. Calm down. Just greet me from afar. High five would do. You know, but that's the kind of kiss that was going on here. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. This woman must be some level, I, I don't even know what word to use. How can a guy see you and he, he, he gets so moved that he starts to cry and weep as well? What level of buffness are we talking about? And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's relative and that he was Rebecca's son. So she ran and told her father. Now, move on to verse number 17. Verse 17 Jacob has come into the house by this stage and he's looking to marry Rachel. I mean, his eyes are on her. Leah's eyes, the Bible says from verse 17, Leah's eyes were delicate. That's Rachel's sister. Re- Leah's eyes were delicate, but Rachel was beautiful of form and appearance. Man, if a man describes a woman like that, that she, no, 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 daddy, the girl I'm talking about, she's beautiful of form an appearance. If my son tells me that, I'll say, no, son, marry that one. Go ahead. Now Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. He says, I will serve you seven years. He was willing to put himself through that for Rachel. You know, Jacob, let's move on to verse number 20. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seemed only a few days to him because of the love he had for her. Do you see that the why, his why, pushed him through those seven years. It seemed like just a few days because his why was so real. I mean, the advantage that he had, he got to see his why every day. Every day he was laboring, he got to see Rachel and he reminded himself, no, she's beautiful of form and of, and of, of form and countenance. I'm going to go all the way. I'm going to serve. Then Jacob, uh, verse number 27. Um, so Jacob says seven, uh, seven years for Rachel. That's, I think that's 20. Je- uh, seven years for Rachel. And they seemed only a few days to him because he loved her. Verse number 27. Uh, Laban did a trick on him and gave him a, a different daughter, Leah. And then told her, oh, because in our culture, uh, you have to marry. The, the older one has to get married first. He didn't tell them that at the beginning, but he wanted to use them again. And Jacob said, okay, no worries. I'll go again. I'll go again. Just give me Le- uh, give me Rachel. So Laban told her in verse number 27, fulfill her week and we will give you this one also for the service which, which you served me with another seven years. And then finally, verse 30, then Jacob also went into Rachel. This is by the time that he had finally served again. He's now gotten Rachel. He served and he also loved Rachel more than Leah. And he served with Laban at still another seven years. All of that because he loved Rachel. His why was so serious. Many people, your why are so weak. That's why you jump here and there. You move from one to the other. Your, the reason for, for that plan is not, is not connected to your value system. You have not emotionally connected to it. You have not made a commitment to it. You have to revisit your why as many times as possible because this will keep you centered. Regularly ask yourself, why am I really doing this? So when you look at your plan on a daily basis or even on a, on, a, on a weekly basis and you're looking into your week or on a monthly basis and you're looking into your month, why am I, I going to commit myself to this? 
I've been having meetings with my leadership and sometimes those, you know, with individuals and those meetings can go on for three hours sometimes. And I ask myself, why, why on earth would anybody commit that amount of time? But because I know that if we get it right, right from the beginning, we have a smoother experience. The work that God has given us to do will be even the more possible if I will invest that time in my leadership. So it makes sense to me. Sometimes I have to sleep really late, you know, one from the next to the next to the next. Why am I really here? Why am I really with this person? Do you ask yourself that? Don't answer what you hope is the answer. Be honest with yourself at least. If God is not in it, if he's not sanctioning it, don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. Because that why will not sustain you. Nothing is easier. This is a man by the name of Arthur God, Gordon that said this. It's nothing is easier than saying words. Nothing is harder than living them day by day. What you promise today must be renewed and redecided tomorrow and each day that stretches out before you. You must remind yourself of why you're doing what you're doing. You know, your, your, your why always allows you to do things regardless. It encourages commitment. When you are interested in something, John Maxwell says this, he says, when you're interested in something, you do it when it is convenient. When you are committed to something, you accept no excuses. You, you look for other ways. If they shut the door, you find another way because you're committed. Because your why is, is your why has been etched into your heart. There are some things I do now because because the alternative is, is not possible. I can't stand, I can't have the alternative, therefore I must have this. Nothing is better than perspective for helping you to see. You want to do the right thing. Seeing the big picture helps you to put up, it helps you to put up with the little irritation. When you constantly see the big picture to remind yourself of why, why am I involved in this? And so for the last couple of minutes that we have together, I want to ask you, what is your why? What is your why for your family? Why do you, why do you invest as much as you do? You know, for me, uh, I took a screenshot of, of, of my phone. One of the things that reminds me every day, this is my, my, my screensaver on my, uh, on my phone. Those three angels that you see, they are one of my biggest whys in life. So every day when I turn my phone on, I'm reminded of my why. There are times when I have to labor hard, go, go the extra mile. They labor after, there are sometimes I have to put up with some things. There, there, are, some, there are some things and, and issues I put up with because of this why. Because of this why. Yeah, issues of legacy. You, my, my why is different from your why. I don't want to go to that. Somebody's yay is different from somebody's yay. My why is different from... <laughs> you guys don't backslide. It is well. <laughs> but I see my why regularly. I'm reminded of it on a constant basis. There are things that I want to throw away, give up on, but no. That doesn't mean, listen, it, it is when that why is compromised, that's when people give up. When that why is put at risk, then people give up. What about finances? What are your, what are your, your what is the why to your finances? Why, why do you want to be rich? Why do you want to have money? Why are you saving? Why are you invested? Why do you sow? Why do you tithe if you tithe? Why do you give if you give? Why do you save if you save? Why do you invest if you invest? Because if you don't know why, after a while, you just think, why am I losing out? I don't get it. This is my money. Why don't I spend it? 
But when your why is clear to you, you're willing to you're willing to take the hit. You're willing to to take the hit because you know what it is that you're doing. Um, who was it that, that, that was talking? Like, John Maxwell said that money is like manure. If you let it just pile up, it stinks. If you spread it around, you will encourage things to grow. That's talking about investment. That's talking about sowing into the lives of other people. You need to be able to do that all at the same time. Money is not a negative thing if you know the why. If you have a clear purpose to your prosperity, God wants to enrich you. Go ahead. Somebody might say it's materialism. No, materialism is not about the things that you own. It's about the things that own you. You're not materialistic if you own stuff. You are materialistic if those stuff own you, which means anybody touches that, you kill them. That thing has become your baby. You can't use it to serve. You can't use it to help. You can't use it to, to be a blessing. When, the, when that thing begins to dictate your value system, now that, that is materialism. But if you acquire things so that you can help, so that you can be, so that you can do, no, you own it. It is a slave to you. But many people are slaves to the things that they acquire. So you need to be checking that. You need to have a solid plan, a solid plan for why you're doing the things that you do. There's a, there's a thing called the cash flow quadrant. And, and we, we'll, we'll put up the, the very first one of the cash flow quadrant. Basically, we, we're not doing um, what's it called, financial, what's it called, today. We'll do that on another day. I just want to give you the, a broad picture of it. You know, you have on the left-hand side, employee, basically you have a job. A, a, a J-O-B, which is generally just over broke. And then beneath that, you have the self-employed. A self-employed person, see, a lot of people that are self-employed think they have a business. No. A self-employed person, you still have a job. The only difference is you're your own boss. You still have to clock in. Because if you don't clock in, guess what? You don't get paid. There are many self-employed people that, that, that say that they are, oh, I have a business. You don't have a business yet until you cross over to the other side. The other side, as a business owner, you own a system where you don't have to show up. But it will still pay you. The system pays you. It's not you laboring now. It's the system that is paying you. When we do uh, a financial MOT workshop type thing, we'll go into detail about all these, all these things and give you practical examples and practical ways to move from one to the other. You know, as an investor, which is the, the, the last thing on, on there, you own investments where now you are, your money is what you have employed. You have employed your money. Your money becomes your employee. Your money is going out to work for you. So while you sleep, your money is making money for you. Can I say something that is probably going to offend one or two people? On the left-hand side, you can never be wealthy. Now, let me explain what I mean. Let me explain what I mean. I mean that in terms of financial independence and freedom, if you rely on just the left-hand side, you will keep on laboring to your old age. And wealth here is talking about the ability to have a full rounded life. Not just about money, because there's some jobs that pay incredibly well. I mean, there's a, there's a gentleman by the name of LeBron James. I don't know if we have that, that picture up. LeBron James actually occupies all four. And he's not the only one. He's not the only one. You know, he's an employee working for the LA Lakers, but the pay that they pay him there, man, some businesses can't even afford that. But he also... He has a, 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 uh, an outfit that he works in as well. But he's his own boss in that one. But then he also has a business where he doesn't have to go in, but he has a product that he's selling, and there's a system that sells that product for him. So while he's sleeping, see, only on the right-hand side that while you sleep, you are earning. I remember one of my uh, leaders, I remember the day we sat down together, I shared this before, and she uh, is Mary uh, Fumbi. You know, 
oh, Pastor Sam, maybe I know other people have businesses. They have a business mind. I don't, it's not, it's not me. It's not me. It's not me. And we said, I said, no, I believe God has given everybody the capacity for that. Let's dream together. Let's figure it out. Today, she's probably one of our serial entrepreneurs coming up with business after business after business, just thinking of this business and then going to this business and then going to this business. Now she's actually, she's actually the, the lead on our marketplace ministry operation. All started from somebody that said, I don't think business is for me. She doesn't talk like that, but you know what I mean. So you need to know why, why, why go through all this? Why go through all this? On the left-hand side, you might have money, but you don't have time. On the right-hand side, you have the capacity to have both money and time. And the freedom of time. Why do you want to be financially free? Is it clear to you? Can you see your why? Why do you want to be financially free? Do you want the freedom to choose what you do, when you do, how you do it? Is it the holidays that you want to be able to go on once COVID allows? Because some people want holidays. But they have to make a choice. Either I go on holiday or I get paid. I mean, we have some big shots in the house whose day rates shake me. They go on holiday and they still get paid. And it's not, it's not as a result of, oh, uh, holiday pay. Mm -mm. There are levels and there are levels. 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 How can somebody say, look, I have to go and do this thing. God has called me. She's not talking to a pastor. She's talking to, their, to her boss. God has called me to go and do this. I have to go. So you need, you need to make a choice. You're either going to just let me go or I'll go and you cannot pay me. I'm good with either. And they're like, we can't, we can't let you go. Go. We will pay you to go. God of mercy on my soul. <laughs> but that's what you want to be. Once you're a person of value, when you're a person of value, listen, your job will pay you to do things that God has released you to do. He creates room. He makes room for you. You need to understand that you want to, you want to migrate. I'm not going to go through that. But basically, you want to migrate from the employee. You want to go all the way to your migrating onto the other side. You can occupy all four. Don't let anybody tell you that you have to pick one or the other. You can occupy all four if you choose. If you choose from where you are now. From where you are now, we just need to build up to that. I told you about the SSS that I teach my children, save, sow, and, and spend. One of the reasons, my why for that is I've been in situations where things just don't fit anymore. I don't know, okay, how much have I given out? How much am I paying for this? How much am I doing that? No, no. Now that it is organized, I remind myself of why I organized it so that I don't have to spend in guilt. So that I don't have to feel guilty when I decline. If I decline somebody that asks me for money, I don't feel guilty. Why? I have an allocation. There's a plan allocated. There's a, there's a portion allocated every, the percentage allocated every single month for giving. Once that is over, I have, I have done that which I agreed with God. So I can't feel guilty. You know, um, your spiritual growth. Why do you want to grow spiritually? I think it was Paul that was writing. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then later on, that's Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10. And then verse number 12, he tells you why you should be strong. He says, look. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Don't, no, don't develop yourself in your spirit. Don't, don't be spiritually sound. When the winds come, come with us to some of our mission trips. And just be flaky. See, the, 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 the wind that sweeps. And don't think that, oh, the demons are out there in different lands. No, they're here too. They're here too. It says, be strong. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 12 says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this age and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. All that congregation, 
they are signed against just only you, Abba. Only you, only me, come on. Therefore, I must have a plan to be secure, to be strong spiritually, to be able to, to, be able to reproduce after myself in the gospel, in the truth, in, in discipleship. I need to be strong. You know, we, we, we've been through different um, uh, seasons and we've just finished the, the, the master life season, which is the, the discipleship tool that we have been utilizing. And there are times when people have given up along the way. Look, that, this is not a, a slide of that. It's just simply their why at that point in time was not strong enough to push through. Maybe the, the stress was bigger than the why. The hassle was bigger than the why. The convenience was bigger than the why. Whatever it is, when the why is, is, is overwhelming, you'll find a way. Oh, you'll find a way. you find a way. You know, there might be one or two people who are triggered by that. Well, was he talking about me? If the shoe fits. You need discernment. You cannot, you cannot be good in discernment if you're not spiritually sound. In the world that we're in at the moment, you need to be able to discern the people and the things that are around you. Why are they there? What are they doing? Not just walking with a blindfold, just walking in and out. Your career. In your career. Why? Why do you want, to, why do you want promotion? Why do you want to get that job? Why do you want to get that increase? What is it about? Why, why do you want to be promoted? What's the why? I remember when there was an opportunity for promotion when I used to work in, the, in, in, uh, in a charity, a local charity in East London. There was an opportunity for a promotion. And everybody was sure, of course, if, if I went for it, oh, no, it's yours. Because of the, the, my, my performance was really, really good. And I told my manager who said, Are you, aren't you applying for this? I said, no. Don't you want to be promoted? I said, no. Not in this particular organization. Why? God had already told me. We've got, we've got work to do in Florida Rivers. You need to get out of here and move on to that. So my why was so clear about what I needed to do, I was able to say no even to good opportunity. Because of the why. There's some people who's the reason why they want to be promoted is so that they can make room for other people to be promoted. You know, to be leading lights. We need more senior people in, in, who, are, who are believers, leading lights in positions of influence. We need more. What about your business? Why, why is it worth spending time to plan your business? I gave you the, the Jews their own why. Their why is because at any stage you could be you could be moved, and you still need to be able to survive. You know, part of the conversation that I had with with Fumbi on that day was we had to go through how whys and then how what's. But the why has been one of the things that she wants to get to the place where she does not have to answer to anybody to be able to make money. I remember when she was talking about how oh sometimes it's really nice you know when you just wake up in the morning and you look at your phone and. Your, your, your whatever is it PayPal this tells you you know you have X amount in your <laughs> like, what nah. for some people that is their why they just want to wake up and see bing 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 ching 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 can you imagine while you are sleeping your money is laboring laboring I don't know why I sounded Ghanaian there laboring <laughs> but we, we you need to have a why you need to have a why you know, COVID, COVID showed us that at any time you could be fired from your job, but they can never fire you from your business. Because, because you created it, you can start it again. But they can fire you from a job. Andrew Carnegie, one of the richest men in the world um, in his day, he said, I want to spend the first half of my life earning as much money as I can and then the second half of my life, giving away as much as I have earned. That became his why. So when he was going and going and accumulating and accumulating, his why was clear to him. I remember I shared this with, uh, I think it was Laura and, and Laura Fumbi and Tiff, I think. And I was, 
I, I said to them that I, I was having a conversation with the Lord. I remember the place where I was in Peckham. I was crossing opposite the, the, the fire station, crossing at the zebra. And I said, Lord, I need to be rich. I need to be like so rich. God said, okay, no problem. Why? You know, and I gave him the answers that I think God would like to hear. You know, so I can help the poor. I can do this. I can do that. I can also obviously look after my family. This, I, you know. And then God said to me, so it's okay. What if I give you all those things? Would you still want to be rich? And then I realized that I was giving him a fake why. Because I, I had to answer and honest and say, actually, I still want to be. And then the question was really hitting home. So why did, he, why, why did I really want the money? So that, what, false sense of security? And it took years of God just working with me and journeying me through that to beat that out of my system, to get me to a place where he can entrust me. Because what he was doing was he was working out so that money that never owns me, so that whatever comes in, I can, I can enslave that money to do work for the master and not be subject to mammon. Education, why? Why are you learning? I know one of the reasons why I read books, guys. I do not. I'm, let me just tell you now, because people say, oh, you know, Pastor Sam, you see all the books that are behind there. They're not just there for decoration. They're books that I've read. Pastor Sam, oh, I'm sure you read a lot. I said, yeah, I do. Oh, you must, you must really enjoy reading. I said, I don't. I don't. I know there are people who love reading. I'm not one of them. But I read. <laughs> I read. Why? My why is clear. Have you seen my leadership? Don't read. They'll be finishing your sentences for you. And then they'll up your game. And you'll be thinking, um, um, see, well, you see, the team there is, you know, look, 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 six. <laughs> a, a, um, what do they call it again? Um, a, a, a student is not greater than his, his teacher. Come on, sit down there. What are you talking about? Are you trying to be greater than me? <laughs> have you seen the caliber of people we have in the ministry? There's some people when they're speaking, when they write English or they speak English, my thesaurus is out. I can't even wait to open it. I just put Google Translate. Hey, Google, translate. Let's wrap this up. What are your whys? Your relationships, I told you already, that a righteous man chooses his friend carefully. So the people that are in your life right now, why are they relating to you and why are you relating to them? You know, there's some, there's some ladies that might be talking to you. They're not interested in you. They're interested in what they can get from you. There's some guys that I might be talking to you. They're not interested in you. They might be interested in what they can get from you. Why? Just know why. But also you. Why are you relating to them? The Bible says iron sharpens iron. If this person is not sharpening me, if I'm iron and you're wood, one of us is going to damage the other. Health. This is a big one for me. Why? Why are you putting yourself through all those things? You need to remind yourself. Why? Why? There's some, there's some things I love, you know, uh, my, myself and uh, one of my leaders were talking about what my staple food is. And she was like, oh, of course, it's easy. You know, it's bread and stew. You know, I said, bread and stew is my go-to. But I had to stop that. Why? I realized that bread was not working well with my system. I love bread. I grew up on bread. I enjoy bread, as in white bread. You know, the agege bread. I love that. Absolutely. I, I, I just love it. But I had to cut down. I had to cut down drastically. In fact, I don't even buy it in the house anymore. Obviously, if I go to somebody's house and it just happens to be there, you know, if I come to your, to your house and it just happened to be on show, in, in, you know, we might just uh, break some bread together according to the scriptural pattern, you know. But I had to wait. Listen. 20, 2018, I had a very, uh, it was, a, you know, a serious health scare. 
And by the, the whole of 2018, I just kept going in for check after check after check just to find out what was going on. 2019, January 2019, I went for a, a full body MOT. And after they did that, they produced the result. And my metabolic age, which is basically saying, regardless of how old I am chronologically, how my body is feeling, how my body is processing food and, and the burn rate and all that was 73. Guys, I don't care if anybody wants to shade me. I'd, I'm not 73. Anybody who thought I was 73 out there, God forgive you. When I saw that, I said, no, nah, this is wrong. This is not good. My body has been through a lot. So I, it became very clear to me, crystal clear, what I needed to do. I needed to, I needed to go ham. We are bringing this thing down. We have to bring this down, which means I have to work. I have to, I have to change how I eat. I've got to change how I operate. I've got to exercise a lot more. So for those who, who watched my, my uh, Insta Live, no, not Insta Live, my uh, Insta Story yesterday, you know, even though it was snowing out here in Brentwood, I put on everything that I could find to put on. I was out there in the cold. Uh, I saw, I, I showed you guys the, my Red Sea. Um, I think the pictures are coming up as well. You know, and on, on, even on my, on my Red Sea as well, I walked through it. It was raining. It was, at one point it was sleeting. It was snowing. But I'm out there regularly, every day. I'm in, I'm in an app with a, a couple of uh, friends where we challenge each other, we encourage each other. Every day I'm out, you know, walking, running, cycling. Somebody say, ah, what, what is it? Ah, peace out. You know, you, you don't, you look all right. I'm thinking, nah, mine, mine is not about the look. Mine is about the health. My why is clear to me. I want to live a long, fruitful life as long as God will give me. I don't want to be the reason to cut short my own existence. You know, uh, a, a good friend of mine, we were talking today, she gave me the permission to, to use her, her picture. Very, very good friend of mine. Uh, in fact, she was my associate when I was a youth pastor uh, many, many years ago. My very first associate, actually. And thank God for, for the relationship. And she shared this picture on, on her own story. And when we're talking about it, he said, yeah, yeah, feel free to use it. She said that for her was part of her, her own why. She said she reminds her, she looks at that to remind herself of why she puts herself through what she puts herself through now. Regularly, you know, our update, oh, she's done this, she's tried this, she's attempted this. What is your why? What are your health goals? John Maxwell said this, says after John Maxwell had a heart attack, his friend saw him pass on desserts during dessert time, and time and time again, he kept passing on desserts. They asked him, John, have you lost your craving for desserts? He said, no, my craving for life is just greater. There are some things that will, that will bring everything into perspective for you. Bring everything clear into perspective. You know, your mental health, your emotional health. You need to remind yourself of why you need to, to take a hold of this. What about your contribution to life? I've just got two more to go. Why, why, why did you make a plan to contribute? What that plan that you made to be to, to have a contribution to, to bring to life? Why is it? Because if it is not real, if you just did it because oh, they told us to do it, you give up on it. You need to go over each one and say, why, why, why is this important to me? Why is this important to me? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I've just been, I've just received very, very good news. Uh, one of our, our sisters, one of the editors of the Strains um, uh, newsletter that we get, God has just blessed her for with a fantastic bouncing baby and uh, the baby's well, mom is well, uh, family's well. So we rejoice and we celebrate with the entire family. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep and really grow that fantastic child uh, in the way of the Lord, in stature and in wisdom, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And finally, why should you have a plan for your eternity? 
my, my only answer to that is, <laughs> are you sure you, <laughs> you want to risk it? Would you, would you want to risk that? Would you want to take a chance on that? There are some things you recover from even if you are wrong. But there are some things you cannot recover from if you are wrong. Eternity is one of those things. Eternity is one of those things. If you're wrong, it's final. It's final. You can have as many arguments as you, as you want against Christ, against Christianity, against the church. I'm not even, I'm not going to fight you on any of those. My simple question is, do you have a plan if you're wrong? Because if you're not, that should be your why to run to Jesus. But the beautiful thing is this. When you come to Jesus, he gives you a greater why. When I was very much younger, I grew up, as, as most people know, a pastor's kid. And I just, I did everything according to the book, to the best of my knowledge. I, did, I didn't lie. I didn't want to steal. I didn't want to do. I mean, I was good at two shoes kind of guy. And I shared with most of you who know my story. It was very simple. I used to sing the song. I believe in Jesus and I love him all so well. Still, I'm going to heaven by and by because I don't want to go to hell. And that was my only reason for going, wanting to go to heaven at that point. I just didn't want to go to hell. Fear was my motivation. But how many people know that fear is not sufficient to hold you all the way? After a while, the fear of the repercussion just doesn't mean much to you anymore. You can't visualize it enough. But Jesus, in his mercy, met with me. And he introduced me to a greater why. He introduced me to love. So that now I want to go to heaven, not because I'm just here in hell, but because genuinely I love Jesus. I love Jesus. So I want to end by just simply saying, guys, if you've been diligent, if you've been obedient to actually make plans, as I asked you to last time, then I'm asking you now to go over those plans and the same way, take them before God. Take those plans before God. And reevaluate your whys for each one of them. Your why for your finances. Why do you want to, why do you want money? Your why for your relationships, your why for your family, your why for your health. Your every why that you, every what that you have must have a corresponding why. I pray that the Holy Spirit will enable you to honor the relevant why in Jesus' name. So that your what's become a reality to bless the generation around you. Next week, we're moving on to another P by the grace of God. I invite you to come, but don't come alone. Bring, bring somebody with you. If you've been blessed by this, share with somebody. Share with somebody. We're going to be releasing these. We have been releasing these messages uh, regularly. Share with somebody. Share with somebody. Let, let, them, let it sink into their hearts as well. Till next time, I pray that God will uphold you, strengthen you, bless his word as it has been spoken over your heart and mind, that it will germinate and bring forth good fruit in the name of Jesus Christ. That we will not live life arbitrary, but we will live life according to God's plan and be motivated by his why that he has birthed in our hearts. Amen. Till next time. We remain flowing rivers, breath and life, wherever we flow. God bless. Thanks for tuning in to this channel. I hope that this message has made an impact in your life. Now, don't forget, like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can keep up with the things that God is doing through and in us. Okay, till next time, we remain flowing rivers. We're breath and life, wherever we flow. Life, wherever we flow.